Ozzy, as you know, we've been looking at Al-Qaeda in 2011, and now with this current report looking out to 2025, can you tell us a little bit about the threat or the manifestation that Al-Qaeda and associated movements may present? No, absolutely, Tom. Now, obviously, uh, you know, when you're predicting the future, we know that it's impossible to determine what it's sure. going to look like, and any attempt to do so would be, would be futile. And we also know that past performance, as many of the stock market commercials say, is no indicator of, of future performance as well. So we, when doing this th threat, though, this project, we still had to determine a model for going forward. So what we decided to do is put forward five potential futures where we could highlight some key themes um, that, um, that no matter how Al-Qaeda might manifest itself in the future, those are the things that the U.S. government and its national partners could focus on. And those five models that we use going forward, the first is what we call a resurgent Al-Qaeda core, mm -hmm. where as you described, that Al-Qaeda core is, uh, in its, in many argue, in its waning days and its dis diminished uh, uh, capability, but there is a scenario that we put forward that says it could, sure. bring, could come back and be even stronger than it currently is today. Mm -hmm. The second scenario uh, is the one that you also uh, addressed, um, is the rise of the affiliates. We obviously, as you stated, seen the rise of the affiliates, but we're talking about a much more uh, a stronger grouping of affiliates that are not tied to the core as closely as they arguably are now. The last, uh, the third one is the, what we call the rise of the, the individual jihadists. Mm -hmm. Again, it's where you talked about this uncomfortable increase in the number of domestic extremists yeah. or uh, self-inspired individuals mm -hmm. who are uh, adherents of Al-Qaeda's ideology, yeah. and that scenario is a rise of those individuals. And then the last two are, are, are kind of a little bit more interesting, a little bit different take. Number four is a scenario where Al-Qaeda actually takes over a nation state, where their ideology, they have a presence inside a country where their ideology is actually dictating what, how that nation state operates. And the last is a little counterintuitive, the last scenario that we discuss in the report is Al-Qaeda going away. If what everyone is saying about Al-Qaeda, uh, that it is in its last days, um, how do we get there? What mm -hmm. does it look sure. like? And how do we make sure we don't get in our own way in, in seeing the end of Al-Qaeda? Certainly. And I think we're, we, we can expect a lot of people asking us which one we think is going to be uh, the most likely to happen. But of course, it could be a combination of all these in the future. So there's, it's not so cut and dry or discreet. Yeah, as Juan Zarati has pointed out, you know, he calls it a hydra, and what we'll probably see is mm -hmm. uh, Al Qaeda over the years mani uh, manifest itself in some yeah. uh, mixture of those of those entities. Hopefully, the last scenario will take place where Al Qaeda yeah. once and for all ends. Yep, yeah. yeah. I hope so. Um, now, Tom, I, I talked a little bit about you know our, our paradigms we have in there, but the paradigms or these individual um, scenarios are really mm -hmm. only one part of the study. Yeah. It's actually a much more comprehensive report that sure. talks about a bunch of different factors we need to consider in discussing the future of Al Qaeda. Sure. Um, could you touch on a few of those? Absolutely. As you know, as co-director with me, we've been working on this for well over a year with a tremendous team of people with us. Uh, you mentioned Juan Zarate and Honor de Borgrav as well. But what we've done is we've broken this up into component parts where we conducted first the Al-Qaeda baseline threat assessment, looking at where Al-Qaeda and its associated movements are in the year 2011. We then conducted a series of case studies looking at Al-Qaeda core, the homegrown threat, and then a number of the affiliates from AQAP in Yemen to Al-Shabaab in Somalia to AQIM, Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb, located in Mali and in Algeria, Lashkar Taiba. Um, in Pakistan, Jama'a Islamiyah in Indonesia. So what we did was we looked at these and pulled out the most relevant factors that contributed to their rise, to their fall, uh, to stasis. And then we used those to help project in the future. It's very difficult to do that task and we have to look historically uh, in order to look forward. So we did that, generated those key factors from charismatic leadership to U.S. or Western forces on the ground to outside sponsorship, to safe havens, and we looked through those and helped essentially characterize the future so that we could do that. Then, as you well know, we engaged in a serious amount of field work to get on the ground in current uh, and future potential terrorism hotspots. hotspots. You and I went to Europe uh, with Zach Film, and then you and I covered Southeast Asia. Dave Gordon and I went to Africa for a month, and we took this field work, all the interviews that you and I did with government officials, counterterrorism practitioners, clerics, um, community leaders, academics, a really wide range of people to give us a sense of what they thought was going on on the ground with Al-Qaeda and associated movements and where they think problems might be in the future. So we did that. We also looked into um, strategic surprises, things that could completely disrupt our notion of the future in those five paradigms that you just laid out. And then we also 
uh, generated UN, UN1 in particular led to creation of these recommendations in the conclusion to help government determine where they can go in, in countering this threat. And all those brought together, uh, I think, generated a pretty solid report. Ozzy, I think the title of our report uh, is, is very indicative of what we're facing. It is an uncertain threat. We've seen this uh, multi-headed hydra um, emerge. I think we have a lot of challenges in the future. I think our report addresses a lot of them, and hopefully it'll be helpful to the policymakers that we address in those recommendations. Thanks, Tom. You're welcome. Thank you, Ozzy.